In the beginning of 2022, VEC partnered with the Danish Trade Council to bring a delegation of Canadian policymakers and business leaders to visit Copenhagen to learn about building decarbonization, energy efficiency, and climate resilience. VEC drew on over a decade of international investment experience, in particular an investment mission to the European Union in 2019, which is related to heat pumps and other green building products. I think for the Danish Trade Council it was easy. Uh, in terms of the interest in collaborating and working more with Vancouver and British Columbia, um, and especially through the partnership with Vancouver Economic Commission uh, that's been going on for actually several years now, uh, it's been clear that there is a, a big match uh, between Vancouver, British Columbia and uh, Denmark, uh, both in terms of some of the local challenges we see, but also similarities uh, around climate and, and local issues and challenges that needs to be solved. We were also really lucky to develop a series of strong relationships with not only the Danish Trade Council, but to have the support of some really amazing local funders like Van City and the Metro Vancouver Zero Emissions Innovation Center. With our partners and funders, VEC worked to develop a diverse delegation of 17 leaders and learners from across the public and private sector in the region. These represented industry associations, nonprofits, individual businesses, and local, regional, and provincial governments. With over 1.1 million inhabitants in the greater Copenhagen area, it is one of the largest cities in Northern Europe. The Copenhagen 2025 Climate Plan, adopted in 2009, aims for it to become the first ca carbon neutral capital in the world by 2025. However, their green transition started long before then. From 1990 until now, Denmark's GDP grew by 62% while reducing their emissions by 42%. Currently, Denmark enjoys 40% renewable in its energy mix. In the urban area of Copenhagen alone, district heating serves 98% of households. In addition, 90% of building waste is reused in the city, showcasing their strong practice on circularity. Copenhagen and Denmark's focus area going forward that were particular of interest to Vancouver were their efforts to scale the heat pump market nationally, where they have already increased their annual national installed from 5,000 in 2015 to 24,000 in 2021. Additionally, regulations related to renovation of existing buildings, where they have requirements to ensure highly energy efficient new equipment and envelope upgrades. And lastly, we're interested in their efforts in addressing embodied carbon and circularity in their building codes, where they have a 2023 requirement that all new buildings use a life cycle assessment for materials, transport to the building site, and construction processes. Because of all this, it was clear that Copenhagen was a jurisdiction we can learn from and collaborate with. In our preparations and early engagements, our delegates expressed a strong interest in understanding the Danish approaches to accelerating building retrofits and the policy drivers and technical implementation necessary for a fulsome climate resilience and decarbonization pathway in the city. In comparison to Denmark, Metro Vancouver has a similar climate uh, and overall BC has roughly the similar population as the overall country of Denmark. These similarities quickly piqued our interest as we looked forward to learning new and creative solutions to addressing climate in our built environment and all the challenges that come with that. With the help of our partners at the Danish Trade Council, we organized a jam-packed itinerary with a total of 13 different site visits, consisting of three government meetings, four project tours, two district energy utilities, three architects, and one accelerator. I mean, that was my first trip to Europe, so everything, I, was, I felt like I was in awe. Uh, hi, my name is Mariko Makashu. I am the program manager for the Building to Electrification Coalition, also known as B2E. My absolute favorite site to visit was Frame House. Um, it's an all wood building that was designed both for disassembly and for reuse. What I really appreciated was the modular construction practice, practices that they use. So, um, in Frame House, they were using platform des design. And what I understand is that you can rearrange the interior of the building for multiple purposes. So if you want to put an office over here, then you want to open it up later, um, it can still be reused without a lot of um, impact to, to the building itself. My, you know, my, one of my favorite places to visit was the, the, you know, was the Danish Energy Agency, right? And I, I was really excited to meet the policymakers and understand 
you know, that process um, just related back to the work that I'm involved in even now and that we're involved in here in this region now. You know, they are um, they're implementing some elegant policy for some really complicated uh, issues. And I think that's, that's, that's what we are striving to do here, right? My name is Lillian Tummins and I'm with the Cadillac Fairview Corporation Limited and I'm the Vice President of Office Operations for Western Canada. Well, when we visited with 3XN and GXN, one of the most uh, inspiring projects was the Key Quarter Tower in Australia. That was, that transformation that they presented to us was so inspiring that I wanted to learn more. The trip to Denmark and Copenhagen over the week was a whirlwind, but there were really three key takeaways that stood out across the entire delegation. The first one is that Denmark and Copenhagen have a really impressive and frankly inspiring culture of urgency in their climate action work. The second is that they have ultimately a simple and holistic performance-based regulatory system that leaves room for exceptions and innovation. And lastly, that their transformation-oriented retrofit culture means that every building has a new life and not just a new fuel source. I think overarching, I think one of the themes that I really saw come to light was how aligned the different levels of government and the interplay between government, regu regulatory bodies, policymakers, and how the private sector was aligned. And they had this vision of where we need to get to. And it seemed like when we were in Copenhagen, everybody was aligned. They had a mission, they had a goal, and they're all kind of speaking the same language. And maybe it's because they, they were put in crisis situations and they had to go to that level of alignment in order to achieve. And I think that's some of the challenges that we kind of face here, um, maybe in North America and Canada, where we don't have alignment at all different levels and sometimes the conversation changes so I think that was a real aha moment like everywhere we turned it was the same message so I think that was absolutely fascinating. I think we're, we're getting to a point where right we have been for a number of years getting to a point where you know the policy on buildings to increase energy efficiency and reduce emissions you know the the approaches are getting complicated we're doing that because it's a policy response to trying to lower barriers or remove barriers that exist in you know, the building's industry or, or amongst building owners and homeowners to take the action that ultimately we would like them to take for the benefit of you know, our region and, and our planet, right, to reduce our emissions, but also to benefit the building owners and the homeowners, right? Denmark is looking at absolute carbon and not valuing embodied emissions or operating emissions differently. It's just it's carbon, it's emissions, um, and so it allows for a more um, holistic approach to how we're going to uh, evaluate a building. So you can place more value on insulation and then a smaller mechanical system, or you can go full bore on you know electrification of mechanical um, and then care a little bit less uh, about your insulation as long as you meet that absolute carbon target. Uh, so I think what BC can learn from Denmark is, is to take that holistic view of both embodied carbon, operating emissions, and potentially leapfrog what they're doing and incorporate that into our policies and also incorporate things like health and resilience. For me, when I saw the 3XN, GXN presentation on the Building in Australia, I'm like, this adaptive transformation of existing buildings was like, well, we actually did something like that. If we're using the existing structure, like how much of the concrete, like, you know, in simplistic terms, like how much concrete can we save by not demolishing the building, not demolishing the structure, and then rebuilding it? Um, you know, from a feasibility perspective, it makes sense to actually reuse the existing structure. And, and you know, our designers are pushed to ensure that when we're using existing structure that it is functional. Which reminded me of the project that we did here in, uh, in Vancouver, which is 725 Granville. It used to be the uh, old Sears box, and I'm sure people, if they remember, it was old Eaton store. Um, it was, I guess, fondly called maybe the urinal. Um, it was a very at that time when it was built, it was probably a very beautiful building, but it became a very 
not very nice looking building. And we were able to transform that building into a mixed use property where we have Nordstrom on the bottom three floors and then we have office space with Microsoft and Sony on the top four floors. We actually did something like that. And I think, you know, for us to continue to study the applications and the outcomes of doing a project like that would be um, something that we can share with our business co colleagues, we can share with the market and say, li listen, like we did this project. However, like we actually saved this much in body carbon. We, uh, you know, we're able to reduce emissions by this much. So I, lots of fascinating things that we can draw upon that project. And I think what Copenhagen maybe is adding to that um, learning for us is that they're, they're also doing that, but they're willing to be a little more flexible, it seems, on um, allowing some of the priorities to bubble up a little bit more and focusing on a few priorities uh, rather than many. Um, and so, uh, but what I do know is that it's allowing them to occur. And what happens as a result of that is learning about whether it worked really well or not and in what ways it worked well and in what ways it didn't. But fundamentally, this trip to Denmark is only the beginning of the next phase for BC and many others in the support of decarbonization, resilience and affordability of our built environment. Vancouver has pushed the envelope further than any other cities in the world, but yet there's still more to be done. We have to work with others from around the world if we were to overcome some of the toughest challenges facing our cities. Um, there's a lot of takeaways, and I think from the Danish side, um, I would almost uh, name it sort of a lost opportunity not to do more. Um, I see specific partnerships being formed already, um, and I think with some of the Danish company stakeholders that we have engaged and worked with now, um, it's clear that there are also real opportunities the whole delegation felt that there was a tremendous amount of opportunity for government-to-government -government collaboration coming out of this trip. And I think from a policy perspective, you know, um, moving into uh, thinking about buildings in a circular way, um, just it, it improves our opportunity, it, it expands our opportunity to think about how we can decouple GHG emissions growth from economic growth. We've got a, a huge untapped opportunity here. We need to zero in on that and really focus on what policy will support getting us moving on that direction more quickly. And I think Denmark, um, you know, increasing our, our, our relationship and, and discourse with Denmark uh, can probably really help with that. So essentially what I want to see coming out of Denmark is what are the strategies being employed um, to achieve their carbon limits? And then maybe we'll have a better sense of how we want to regulate it going forward. Like you put it into practice, this is what it ends up like and how can we apply that here. One of our major priorities then coming out of this effort is to bring together relevant organizations to support the forming of new relationships and partnerships between the Danish government and in particular energy agency and entities in BC, especially our Ministry of Energy and Mines. These relationships are really important because they can promote the sharing of best practices and potential collaborations on policy issues related to climate, energy and buildings. Copenhagen really has embraced this uh, ethos of experimentation and they are working collaboratively with um, experimenters in the built form to innovate solutions that they're not sure if they work or not and I think that I think that that's a lesson that I think I'm bringing back here to say that you know um, we do a little bit of that here um, but we don't do enough of it and there's really no better way to you know test these policies as they're being implemented by seeing a building and it's built in its physical form having the occupants experience it and use it in the way that it was intended to be used and then ultimately understanding whether it was you know was worth it was whether it was a good experiment and what you should take away what I'd love to see is results of how that actually plays out in practice um, to have a better understanding of what strategies are being employed and um, what the best balance is of say insulation versus mechanical equipment um, to, to understand what we're yeah like what, it, what the balance is. Our second priority coming out of the trip is related to information. There's a huge amount of things that businesses, academia, government, and others in Denmark are doing that can be of use to us here. 
We'll be looking to share research briefings, case studies, and even to host seminars or dialogues with Danish leaders to work through where their building players are leading and what we can do together to learn and collaborate. Lastly, we know that relationships are key to all the work that we're trying to do. In addition to the institutional linkages and the sharing of information, our delegates and the Danes we spoke with really want to engage in this long-lasting relationship development. So working with the Danish Trade Council, our wonderful uh, industry associations, and all the other partners in play, we're going to be looking to bring Danish delegates to Vancouver and ideally to send future delegations back to, to Copenhagen. You know, when it comes to companies, sometimes there's a notion of competitiveness. And I think when we look at climate change and what we can do to reduce carbon emissions, I don't think we can be competitive in that space. I think we need to be aligned and we're all working towards the same goal because those goals are to reduce carbon emissions. I, I think there's absolutely an opportunity for the private sector to work more closely together and have like the same voice and I think we're starting to see it and I think BOMA BC does a great job in bringing these private entities together because we're all members and also having these conversations with you know yourselves and with the city of Vancouver and Metro Vancouver I think as we move forward and bring more light and building these bridges between public and private I think the better all will all be. Leveraging VEC's international networks, our partnership with the Danish Trade Council, and the local knowledge and insight of Zebex, B2E, and our many wonderful industry associations, we really hope to see new partnerships forming between Danish organizations and our own very soon. Trips like this one create incredible opportunities, but also risks. We don't want this to be a one-off event. We really want to see the trip to Denmark be leveraged and the lessons from it to build something much larger. Through the VEC Zero Emissions Economic Transition Action Plan and the newly released BC Heat Pump Strategy, all of the partners here, as well as those in Denmark, have many reasons to continue to work together to address supply chain challenges, to share knowledge and best practices, and otherwise to work together to drive collective action and decarbonize our buildings. British Columbia and, and you know, City of Vancouver, right, and some of the surrounding jurisdictions are leaders on a global stage in many ways. And um, I think that the work that we're doing here is is comparable and in some ways, you know, uh, really advanced when we even when we look at places like Copenhagen. And so to see Copenhagen, Denmark on the global stage means that there's absolutely no reason why Vancouver or any of the other municipalities that are in this province can't be actors on a global stage, can't be showing and leading by example, um, can't be um, you know, des designing world-class policy that can be exported to other places. And in doing so, we have an impact that's far greater than the emissions of our own jurisdiction. In BC, we're, we're kind of pursuing both climate mitigation and adaptation strategies at the same time. You know, we've actually experienced climate impacts firsthand, especially in BC, uh, with heat domes and overland flooding and like, you know, we're seeing it happening, uh, so we are recognizing the need to, to act towards it. Building in like a B2E coalition, for example, we have people on board ready to do the work for climate mitigation. And at the same time, if you electrify a building, you, well, if you're adding a heat pump, you're adding in cooling as a resiliency measure as well. So that is all kind of being considered um, in the BC context. I think like what I've learned, like the call to action is we need to act now. Because I think we're, you know, mature enough in this space that, and there's a lot of smart people out there that I think we're at this point in time where we can actually act and do the real things in order to reduce it, carbon emissions, in order to affect, you know, a positive effect on climate change because it's not singular, it's not about me and you, or it's like a competition. We need to do this because as climate change unfolds, all of us are being impacted for it. So I would say we all, and we meaning the collective whole, need to act. We can't keep just talking about it, we need to act. We want to express our gratitude once again to all the delegates, to the Danish partners who participated in this, and to our funders, the Danish Trade Council, the Metro Vancouver Zero Emissions Innovation Center, and Van City Community Credit Union. We're really grateful for your support and we're excited to keep going. And lastly, to all of our delegates, thank you and let's get to work.